Hello, welcome to Introduction to Java Programming. In this session, we will discuss about multiple inheritance in Java. Let's start. We know inheritance is there in Java, wherein a class acquires properties from other class. And this inheritance can be of different types. We have a single inheritance where class B extends A. So this can be written like this. Class B extends A. Extends is the keyword which specifies uh, inheritance. Now we have multi-level inheritance also. In multi-level what happens? Uh, there is a class C. This class C extends from class B. Okay. And class B, in fact, uh, got extended from this class B, in fact, extended from class A. Class B extends A. So like that, we can have a chain of hierarchy. So in multi-level, a, a class is getting inherited from another inherited class, another derived class. Then we can have hierarchical inheritance also. Class C uh, extends from A, that is one level, and Class B extends from uh, A. Look like that also, it, it will be there actually. See, wherever you see here, extends is allowing only one class. Here also, extends allows only one class. Here also, extends allows only one class. So here also, you have to write like this, right? Class C extends A. So this is uh, one. And then I have this class B, which is extending from extends. Yeah, so which extends from A, right? So this is what hierarchical inheritance. So now let's come to the multiple inheritance actually. So in multiple inheritance, what is there? You have class C, you have to write like this. You have class C, which extends from extends from b comma a is that possible no so this is not possible after extends you cannot use more than one class actually right so this is not allowed in uh, java so multiple inheritance multiple inheritance is not possible in java it's not allowed because after the extends keyword you cannot have more than one class okay so multi level is actually a chain actually so one class extend from other that class extends from some other class like that but multiple inheritance what happens a class is getting acquired from more than one class directly so and this is not allowed so this is not there in java not possible in java why why it is not possible uh c plus plus it's possible multiple inheritance is there in c plus plus but Java, they have removed uh, multiple inheritance. The reason is, in Java, all classes will form hierarchy. All classes will form hierarchy. We have Java API classes, right? And at the top, the root most class is object class, java.lang.object class. So at the top of the hierarchy, we have a class. So whatever the class I write, a customer, a student, or whatever, it has a parent class that is object class and all object class 11 methods we can use. So by default, all classes in inheritance will form hierarchy. Okay. So java.lang.object is a super class of all classes. So now because of this, what happens every time, whenever you have multiple inheritance kind of scenario, you will actually going to get something called the diamond problem. And because of this diamond problem, you will get the ambiguity. So the member ambiguity, it may be uh, a constructor, it may be a data member, or it may be a method, whatever it is, you will get the ambiguity. Let's understand this diamond problem, what I'm trying to tell you. So for this, I need certain annotation. So I will actually annotate over here. So let's assume I have a class I have some class like this. Let me draw this. I have this class A. 
or uh, whatever it is actually. So I have three classes. Let's name them actually. So let's say this is class A and this is class B. This class B and here I have class C. Okay, so now what is uh, multiple unit tensor? The class C extending from these two classes. The class B is extending from these two classes. So this is not possible straight away. Because I can, I have, if at all I have to write, I write like this. I have to write like this. So I have to say class C extends because there are two classes A, comma B. This is not allowed. This is not allowed in Java. In C++, it is allowed actually. You can specify. Okay. So here what happens? Um, C is extended from A. So all the members of A are available to C. And all the B members are available to C as well. So here, only this is the scenario we can handle it. In C++, only this is the scenario and we will handle it. Okay, but in Java, what, what else will happen? All classes will form, form hierarchy and you will have a class also over there over here. Right? Because all classes will form some hierarchy. So if I write a class A, class A has a parent that is the object class. And if I write class B, which is also have a parent, that is object class. Okay. So here you will have this object class. That is a the super class of all Java classes. So that means if you just define a class A. So something like that you are saying class A. And don't think you don't have any parent. Object class your, is your parent. If you write class B here. And you, you will also have a parent class that is object class. So object class is the parent class of every other class if you are not specifying. So for example, class A is extending from some X. X will have now the parent as object. So object class is the parent class for every other class. Okay, so now if you see this is a diamond problem. So this is the diamond problem actually. See here, here like this we have the diamond creation, right? A diamond is getting created like this. So that's why we call this as a diamond problem. So always, whenever you have this particular multiple inheritance kind of scenario, you always get this particular uh, diamond problem. So now what happens? So all the properties of this object are available to class A. So there are 11 methods. And here also you will have all the 11 methods coming up. Right? And let's assume class A and B have nothing uh, other than uh, the parent things. Now for class C, you have 11 methods of object through A and you have 11 methods from uh, object B. So total you have 22 methods. So 22 methods, what are the uh, 11 methods? You know, right? Equals method, get class method, clone method, finalize method. Okay, wait, notify, notify all. Okay, so these all uh, uh, like uh, two string method, hash code method. So 11 methods are there. So 11 methods, we have one copy from uh, class A and another copy from uh, class A. So now the same named methods in a single class, it's not possible, right? Same named methods with the same signature. Because through inheritance, you are getting everything. The entire signature is available. So you cannot have same, same named methods with the same signature in a class. Right. If same named methods with different signatures, that is called overloading. Method overloading, that is possible. But all object class methods through A and all objects cl uh, class methods through object uh, class B. Same named method, same signatures, that's not possible. So this is called the diamond problem. And uh, yeah, so that's why it's not actually allowed in Java. But C++, how this, how this problem was solved. So in C++, we specially make this particular class whatever the class that's coming in the place of uh, object, right? We, we actually make this class as virtual base class. Call that as a virtual base class because in C++ all classes will not form hierarchy. Okay, there is no class hierarchy, but a predefined hierarchy. Okay, so whatever the class that comes over here, we clearly say, for example, some X class will come here. So A is extending from X and B is also extending from X. Then that X class we will say, a virtual base class, 
right? We will use that keyword actually, so virtual, and then only one copy is uh, passed to the um, children actually. So that's how C++ solves, but Java is simple and straightforward, and it has removed many features from C++, like operator overloading, right? Copy constructor, multiple inheritance. So these are the things which are actually removed uh, from C++. You know, Java has come from C++, right? So some of the concepts are removed from C++ and some of new concepts were added, just like interfaces, okay, they are added into Java. Okay, so this is uh, about uh, the diamond problem. And uh, yeah, since uh, because we have the diamond problem and there is an ambiguity in calling the members or methods, so multiple inheritance is not allowed. Okay. Now we can clearly say that multiple inheritance is not possible in Java with classes. Okay, multiple inheritance with classes is not possible. So that means extends keyword will not allow more than one class. But if we see here the last lines actually, multiple inheritance is achieved through interfaces. Multiple inheritance is not possible with classes, but multiple inheritance can be achieved with interfaces. So that's why it is tricky. And one of the most frequently asked interview questions. Multiple inheritance is there in Java? Clearly, we say it's not there for classes, but we can achieve multiple inheritance kind of mechanism with the help of interfaces. So how do we do that? A class can implement multiple interfaces a class can implement multiple interface okay so how do we write actually so for example you have an interface a this one interface a and you have some other interface b okay so two interfaces or you can have n number of interfaces also interface c so you have these interfaces now you require some implementation classes right so now there exists a class x that implements that implements implements is the keyword a comma b comma c this is possible now it is the responsibility of the class x to provide uh, the implementations for all these all these methods all these abstract methods which are there in the interfaces so class X implements A comma B comma C and all the methods of all the interface have to be implemented over here. This is possible. So that means after implements, you can actually see uh, multiple interfaces specified. So this is something like multiple inheritance, right? This is something like multiple inheritance, but this multiple inheritance with interfaces, with interfaces, this is possible. Okay, so we can achieve multiple inheritance kind of mechanism using interfaces okay so for that i have a code already written let's actually check here so i have an interface printable and i have an interface showable interface have print method and this interface has show method so two interfaces are there now i have a class multiple inheritance demo mi demo implements printable and showable now it is the responsibility of this mi demo to provide implementations for these two abstract methods so we know all the members in interface are public. So public wide print, and this is how it is implemented and public wide show, and this is how it is implemented. So in my main method, now I can create, I can create something like this. So printable P equal to new MI demo and showable S equal to new MI demo. So like the two references I have to create and call print and show methods respectively. Otherwise I can actually create uh, something like this MI demo directly I'm creating instances of uh, the class actually mi demo from m equal to or uh, mi demo mi equal to uh, new mi demo okay so instance got created and now i can call mi dot print and mi dot show so this is uh, multiple inheritance right class implements more than one interface extends does not allow more than one class but implements you can actually have multiple uh, interfaces in fact if you see java api and there are so many classes for example if you see a string class string class implements so many interfaces 
okay all predefined uh, classes uh, if you actually check so those are those are implementing multiple interfaces fine so now let me actually compile this so the file name is my demo and let me go to the terminal and let's say java c mi demo dot java compile successfully when you compile how many dot class file will get created here printable dot class showable dot class and mi demo dot class three dot class files so now you want to see here for example you want to see java p printable java p and let's say printable just see here so it is compiled from mi demo dot java right and you can also see java p showable because this file has uh, two interface and one class so all those are going to get created up upon compilation so here showable also created from mi, MI uh, demo dot java fine so when i compile this file i have three dot class files and my main method is there in mi demo so now i have to call that one java space mi demo now we are creating an instance of mi demo and we are calling these methods actually so it's printing and it's showing so it's working actually right so this is an example how multiple inheritance is achieved uh, with the help of interfaces fine so multiple inheritance in general is not possible in java that means with classes it's not possible because it creates a diamond problem and there is an ambiguity right but multiple multiple inheritance is achieved with the help of interfaces okay yeah so now let me give tell you one last point and uh, we can actually conclude this session and in java we have something called marker interfaces okay so an example of marker interfaces are serializable and we have something called clonable so what do you mean by a marker interfaces which has another name also which are also called as tagged interfaces marker interface or tagged interface so serializable java.io. serializable that's the full name and java.lang. clonable so it is from lang package and it is from io package so these are marker interfaces what is the purpose of marker interfaces these marker interfaces uh, will not have any methods will not have any methods okay so that means uh, a serializable interface has no methods inside it's an interface it's an interface but it has no method it has no method so clonable also is an interface which has no method so like that few interfaces we have like serializable clonable and remote is also there which have no methods okay still uh, they are important actually okay so what these will do is these interfaces will convey some information to jvm okay so these these interfaces when used actually will tell some info or will provide some info otherwise we can say these interfaces will provide some information to the jvm okay so for example if i want to serialize any object that class must implement serializable interface if i want to clone any object that class must implement clonable interface that means just i have to use like this for example i just i just have to say public class a implements serializable serializable now what happens since i am saying implement serializable now some information will be uh, sent to jvm that so whatever the objects of this class a those are going to get serializable okay if it is not there then you are trying to serialize class a that's not possible you are trying to serialize objects of class a that's not possible in the same fashion public class a implements clonable now you can clone objects of class a so if you are not saying implements then jvm will give you an error clone not supported error not serializable not serializable error something like that so since we are discussing interfaces so let's understand about these things also marker or tagged interfaces example serializable clonable and remote they don't have any methods they are api methods okay and they are already defined actually in the java api we just need to use them such that jvm understands what we are going to do okay so that's it about the interfaces 
so with this um the the object oriented program principles uh, things are done actually so we started with understanding classes uh, how to create objects then object oriented principles started with encapsulation fully encapsulation and then inheritance then polymorphism now abstraction right so we have seen so many things so abstraction is achieved with the help of uh, abstract classes and interfaces right and in polymorphism what is overloading and what is overriding and then in inheritance uh, how what happens in inheritance and then what is actually the super keyword a uh, later app casting okay uh, so all these things so object oriented concepts or object oriented programming in java uh, requires at at minimum all these things actually so with this object oriented programming is done and from, from now on what we'll actually go to new concepts like packages nested classes input output uh, multi threading string handling exception handling collections etc okay so hope you understood and see you uh, soon with the next session thank you